Hello there, my name's Gary Sims, and this is Gary Explains. Now, Linus Torvalds, of course, the inventor of the Linux operating system, released a new version of the Linux kernel uh, very, very recently, and he threw in this little bit of information during the release that he did it on an ARM 64-bit laptop. No longer on an Intel or an AMD computer, he did it on an ARM laptop. So Linus Torvalds, is moving away from x86 and moving towards ARM64. Now, that's pretty amazing. And if you want to find out more, please let me explain. So starting with some context, of course, when Linux was first uh, written, the very, very early days, Linus only had an Intel 80386 a based PC, a 386BC. He had to access sometimes to a 486. And this was kind of the idea that he was just aiming at 386, 486. And he said that it wasn't really going to get any bigger support than that. Of course, over the years, the hardware support has exploded. In the early days, of course, you then had, you know, MIPS and you had DEC Alpha and you had Spark added. And now recently, of course, you've got uh, ARM, both the 32-bit and the 64-bit ARM, as well as lots of other processes. Of course, in our smartphones, if you're running Android, you're actually running the, the Linux kernel at the heart of that, running on an ARM 64-bit system. But of course, the thing is that with the ARM system, it's great for mobile phones. You've got things like the Raspberry Pi, but when it comes to desktops and to laptops, the hardware that's available is pretty limited. And I've got another video on this channel saying we need ARM-based PCs. And Linus agreed and made that very statement. That's what I made that video on. Because today I could go down to any local consumer electronics store. I could buy a fridge or I could buy a PC and it could cost me, what, $100, $200, $300, depending on, on what I want to pick up. I mean, literally the other day I was in a hardware store and there was a laptop. Okay, it wasn't very high performance, only had four gigabytes of memory, but it was it was under $200. It was like $150. And I was like, how can there be this laptop with, you know, with an SSD in it and four gigs for, for $100? Because you want to buy an ARM-based machine, it's going to cost you much, much more than that. So we've been limited by the hardware. However, there is one laptop that exists that is very, very high performance, even though it is still quite costly. And of course, that are the Apple Mac based laptops with the uh, M1 and now the M2 processors in them. So up until Linus has mainly been using x86 based PCs and laptops, but now he's actually been able to release this version of Linux using the MacBook with uh, an ARM 64-bit processor in it, but not running Mac OS, but actually running uh, Linux. In fact, specifically the Asahi version of uh, Linux, which is specifically built for the MacBooks with the M1 and the M2 processors in it. So let's see what uh, Linus actually said. On a personal note, the most interesting part here is I did the release and I'm writing this on an ARM 64 laptop. It's something I've been waiting for for a long time, and it's finally reality thanks to the Asahi team. We had ARM64 hardware around running Linux for a long time, but none of it has really been usable as a development platform until now. And this is, again, the key thing. It's OK to have a Raspberry Pi, absolutely fantastic device. It's OK to have, you know, the Jetson Nano. It's OK to have, you know, uh, ARM64 uh, servers up in the cloud from Amazon or from Google Cloud or from ever. But what we need as consumers and as developers is something we can get our hands on and use today. Now, again, the uh, MacBook, of course, is not a cheap piece of hardware. However, it does offer amazing performance, amazing performance. So therefore, you can kind of say, well, if you're Linus Torvald, certainly it's worth paying the money. But other offerings in that area, you, you know, the, I've got whole videos here on how we need cheap uh, ARM hardware. I'll leave links to all those videos in case it interests you. The whole I dynamic here of what needs to happen uh, in the description below. He, he adds more about his previous use of Apple hardware. Let's see what he says. It's the third time I'm using Apple hardware for Linux development. I did it many years ago for PowerPC development on a PPC 970, that's a PowerPC 970, and then a decade ago when the MacBook Air was the only real thin and light around, and now as an ARM64 platform. Now this really is a seismic shift 
in the way that we see uh, the ARM platform for laptops and for desktops. As I've said, servers, smartphones, tablets, this of course is well established that ARM is the, the leader in all those fields. What we really desperately need is some ARM-based PCs, PCs that look like PCs, you know, with a motherboard and you can put a graphics card in it and you can, you know, you can add more memory modules and it doesn't cost thousands and thousands of dollars and then you choose what SSD you put in there or whatever else you want to connect to it, it comes in a vanilla white box and then you just go and buy it for a few hundred. what we desperately, desperately need, but somehow they're, they're not happening and it's really, really quite a disappointment. However... Apple are leading the way in bringing ARM to the consumer, and they've done that first of all, of course, with the iPhone and the iPad, and now, of course, with the MacBooks, and we really just need everybody else to catch up with them. He adds one more thing. Not that I've used it for any real work. I literally have only been doing test build and boot, and now the actual release tagging. But I'm trying to make sure that the next time I travel, I can travel with this as a laptop, and finally dog fooding the ARM 64 side too. So clearly this is early days, he's uh, waiting for his next travel uh, thing, and for him that's probably quite often. And he doesn't want to take an Intel laptop, an AMD laptop, he wants to take his Apple laptop with an ARM 64-bit processor inside of it, and he wants to do Linux development while he's traveling using that device. Now what did he mean by dog fooding? Well there is a, a tradition amongst software engineers that if you write something, an email client or an operating system or a, a game or whatever, you should be using that yourself, uh, eating your own dog food. That's the idea. And what he's saying is that he wants to be able to also use this as a daily driver so that he can see where there are any weaknesses or problems in the Linux kernel on the ARM64 side. Because of course, he has mainly concentrated on the x86, x86, 64 side for so many years. Now he wants to eat his own dog food and try it uh, on ARM64 and see if there are any performance bottlenecks, if there are anything that doesn't work properly. And then he knows he can concentrate on that side of the kernel as well. So that's also very positive for the Linux kernel on ARM64 because the creator of Linux is actually gonna be using it as a daily driver so he can see kind of go, well, actually, I think I want to improve that kind of thing, or it doesn't, why doesn't that work properly, or why doesn't that work as well as it does on another platform? So great news all around. So if I, a, an appeal to all of the hardware manufacturers out there, please, we need ARM-based PCs and laptops that don't cost $1,000, $1,500. We need ARM-based PCs that are easy to buy, easy to upgrade. You can just get, you know put in whatever graphics card you want, whatever memory you want, and we don't have to spend thousands of thousands of dollars. Please, there's no technical reason why you can't do this. And Linus is trailblazing the way, showing that it can be done, admittedly, on a slightly more expensive uh, laptop. Okay, that's it. My name's Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. I'd love to hear your comments on ARM64 Linux and ARM64 Windows uh, in the comment section below. If you like these kind of videos, please stick around by subscribing to the channel. Don't forget you can follow me on Twitter at Gary Explains, and I also have a monthly newsletter. Go over to GaryExplains.com, type in your email address, no spam, but you will get the email. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.